The last module discussed non-renewable energy resources. This one we're going to look at renewable energy. The first one is solar. There are two types of solar energy that you need to be able to distinguish between. The first one is passive solar heating. The second is active. Passive solar heating is using the sunlight directly for either heat, um, for space heating, so heating the air, or heating like a hot water heater. Um, so it uses sunlight coming directly through the window. You might have um, like a concrete floor or dark tiles or something that absorbs the heat. Um, usually in the northern hemisphere, if you would have southern facing windows, so that in the winter, the angle of sunlight is lower, so it's going to enter your windows, whereas the summertime, the angle of sunlight is higher, it hits your roof and is shaded. This is the North Carolina State University Solar House. It's a research house. Um, they're testing different types of solar panels and other renewable energy sources. And they use both um, active and passive solar energy. You could see these are south facing windows. And if you were to go inside the house, they do have the types of tiles that are going to absorb the sunlight to warm it during the winter. Active solar heating, you have to have a certain type of collector that stores the solar energy and converts it into electricity. So you're not using the sun's heat directly. Um, so you would use some type of fan or pump that's gener that uses the electricity that's generated and it circulates the heat through the house or the hot water. Um, the newest type of uh, solar energy cells are called photovoltaic. They're very thin and flexible and they can convert the sunlight directly to electricity. They're a very thin silicon sheet um, and they can be used for different things. You can see there in the bottom picture there's actually panels on a backpack and the idea is that you could plug in your phone or your laptop or your tablet uh, while you're walking around outside to charge it directly from the sun. PV cells last about 30 years. They can make um, shingles for roofs out of them and you would just replace them just like you would a regular roof. Um, they cost about 30 cent per kilowatt hour to install, which is more expensive than using non-renewable resources, but once they are installed, you're no longer paying um, the electric costs. You can have what is called a standalone system or a grid connected system. Grid connected means that during the daytime, let's say you aren't home, but your panels are collecting electricity, your meter would actually turn backwards because you're sending the extra electricity to the power company. And then at night, when um, the sun is not shining, you use electricity from the power company instead of your own solar energy. So at the end of the month, instead of getting a power bill, you might actually get a check from the power company. These are some examples of how we can use solar energy as um, a power station that would supply more than just one building. This is called a central receiver system or power tower where the sunlight hits the mirrors and the light is um, can, uh, the light is directed towards that central power the good gracious the central tower. This is a solar thermal plant. Um, it's hard to see, but there's a pipe that runs through the middle that's filled with oil. And these curved mirrors direct um, the sunlight towards that tube. You can kind of see it here as well. A parabolic dish collectors, um, they're also a curved mirror that's going to direct the sunlight to that um, central receiver on each of the dishes. These are a few other examples of solar collectors as well. A solar cooker is one way to use passive solar heating um, to heat food. And we'll actually do a project with this after uh, the exams at the end of the year. Our second example of renewable energy is energy from water. We call that hydroelectric power. Uh, we have both large scale and small scale projects. This is a large scale, um, which is a dam. It, you would build it on a river. The water um, is stored behind the dam and as power is needed, the water is released and it turns turbines. This would be an example of a small scale project um, built on a river or stream. It doesn't have a dam. It's always going to flow um, through which would turn a turbine. Not going to create as much power as our large scale projects. This third one is called a pump storage system. What happens is you have a reservoir of water 
um, and you've got um, your regular reservoir down here at a lower level. At peak energy times, um, they can release this water from the upper reservoir and as it falls it turns a turbine. During low energy use times, they would use electricity to pump the water back up. And that just helps with not having to build an extra power plant. There are advantages and disadvantages to using hydropower. They do have a moderate to high net energy yield, um, and the reservoir itself uh, is useful for drinking water, irrigation, recreation. You're able to prevent floods downstream uh, because you control the amount of water that's released from the dam. Um, however, the building of the dam to create the reservoir does flood a very large area. So the people that live in that area have to move. It destroys wildlife habitats. Um, because we are controlling the amount of water that goes downstream and preventing floods, we're actually decreasing the amount of silt that's deposited on the riverbank. So that affects the fertility of our farmland. The dam itself is going to block some of that silt from flowing downstream as well. Other ways we can use water, we can use tidal power or waves. Um, and the same general idea, the movement uh, turns a turbine that generates electricity. The problem is um, it's expensive and there's not many sites on Earth. There's only about two locations, one in Canada and one in France, that have a high enough difference between high and low tide um, that we're able to harness the energy from those areas. We can harness electricity from the heat stored in water. Uh, we can use ocean thermal energy conversion and that uses the um, the density differences in water with the warm water rising the cold water sinking. Uh, we use solar ponds, both saline, which is salt water, and fresh water. Um, this would be an example of what that would look like. and It's basically a very shallow pond on a black base that stores heat. Another uh, renewable energy source uh, that is unlimited if you find a good location is wind and using wind turbines. Uh, one of the benefits to using wind is that the land at the base is still useful. So a lot of times farmers will be paid to put these wind turbines and they can still use the land at the base. The problem is finding a location. You need an area where you have constant steady winds. So the advantage is um, it is a very fast growing energy resource. We're seeing more and more wind turbines. Um, the U.S. and Denmark are the two leading producers of wind energy. It's cost competitive with coal um, because you have to take into account the cost of actually building and installing the wind turbines. But of course you're not going to have the pollution um, you are like you do from burning coal. Now we do have visual pollution. A lot of people are um, against putting wind turbines in certain areas like mountaintops or um, the continental shelf because they don't want to go to the beach and sit out and look at all the wind turbines. And they also create noise pollution. They are, they're very loud. If you've ever been close to a wind turbine, um, they are quite noisy. And then they do disrupt migratory birds. So you have to be careful that they aren't placed in any um, migratory patterns. Biomass is another energy source. Um, bio, of course, meaning living. So we're taking organic matter. You can burn it as a solid or <laughs> convert it into a gas or biofuel. Burning wood is considered um, biomass. Um, however, burning wood does put solid particulates into the air that have been known to cause cancer or other respiratory problems like bronchitis or emphysema. Uh, wood burning stoves are very inefficient. You lose more heat than you get energy. In addition to burning wood, we can also burn agricultural or urban wastes. Uh, we have waste to energy incinerators and instead of using a landfill can burn trash. Methane digesters um, take uh, like cow manure or food scraps and turn it into biofuel. Um, so this would be an example. Now it's not like the cow just stands over the biogas generator and poops. It ha actually has to be harvested and you put it into the generator um, and it creates the gas as it decomposes. Anaerobic, decompose anaerobic decomposition releases methane and that methane is the gas that is burned. It can be used for heating or cooking. 
geothermal energy, geo meaning earth, therm meaning heat, so that is heat from the earth. Uh, there is dry steam, wet steam, and hot water. Um, it can be used as direct heat. Iceland, uh, they don't have to pay for electricity to heat their homes. They actually use the heat from the earth's interior. We can use geysers uh, to produce electricity, just like turning a turbine. When we evaluate different energy resources, um, we can evaluate them based on three different areas. The um, economic advantages and disadvantages, environmental disadvantages and advantages, and social. And depending on where you are, those factors may change. For example, if you're in an area that has many forests, like in a Scandinavian country, then wood might make sense as a main fuel source it's, um, economically. But if you're in Saharan Africa, where you're not going to have very many trees, that would not make much economic sense. Um, in class, we'll take a look at an example of uh, one country and what decisions they made based on these three criteria.